My name is Nancy Nolton. I've worked for the Smithsonian since 1984, starting at Stry in Panama and at the museum as the Sant Chair of Marine Science since 2007. And what I'd like to talk about today is something that was actually the last slide on my lightning talk a year ago, and which has since basically taken over my life, and that's the Earth Optimism Summit. It's starting two weeks from today. Uh, it's going to bring 200, over 200 speakers from over 20 countries. Uh, there are global sister events in Hong Kong, Helsinki, Panama, and many other places. It's the launch of the Smithsonian Institution's Conservation Commons, and has a lot of natural history museum uh, participation in the way of speakers, uh, moderators, and a film event on Saturday evening, uh, and also a wonderful teen-only event in Curious on Sunday. So this, this effort was born out of two convictions. The first is that in the sense, in, in, when it comes to trying to do something about sustainability, just talking about the doom and gloom future will not work. It leads to apathy, not action. And secondly, there's no reason to just talk about doom and gloom because there are literally thousands of solutions out there. It's just that no one talks about them, no one knows about them, not even professionals, and certainly not the public. And so what I'd like to do is dash through a tiny fraction of the program for you, I'll give you a sense of who's involved. We, have, of course, have a lot of uh, speakers working on the idea of saving species or protecting spaces. This is a very uh, core strength of the Smithsonian, and it includes not only uh, uh, National Geographic explorer Enrique Sala, MacArthur Fellow, uh, Pat Wright, who works on lemurs, but also people like John Weller, whose uh, photographs of Antarctica helped uh, achieve the preservation of the the Ross Sea. Uh, there are also a lot of surprising solutions, probably many of you don't know about. Uh, the CNN hero who works with Maasai warriors to help them protect lions, a uh, program to get gangs in Brazil to protect rivers, a whole family of traditional poachers that are now live, wildlife protectors, and even a World Bank project on making jewelry from invasive lion fields, uh, fish spins. Uh, there are a lot of uh, material about cities. Most of us live in cities, and many of the solutions are coming from cities. Uh, everything from New York Harbor's uh, Billion Oyster Project to an incredible project in Nairobi, where not the provision of clean toilets is also uh, the waste is collected and turned into fertilizer for people who live in Nairobi slums. And also importantly, Dale Ross, he's the mayor of Georgetown, Texas. It's uh, the largest renewable city uh, in the United States. He is a conservative Republican. So these solutions come from both sides of the aisle. The future of food, we all need food, and we won't be sustainable unless we produce our food sustainably. Uh, some of the things that will be talked about include vertical farms uh, being built outside New York, Nora Puyon of Nora's Restaurant here in DC, a pioneer in uh, organic food, and Tristram Stewart, who's a food waste uh, a guru, who's actually going to be making some of the food at the summit from food waste. Uh, technology solutions range from uh, sensors that will allow you to see what the pollution levels are on your cell phone uh, to our own Steve Box, who uh, is uh, using uh, GPS uh, technology to track artisanal fishers, and even a robot orangutan, one of those eyes is a camera. Uh, leading voices, including Jane Lubchenco of our national board here at the museum, uh, former head of NOAA, and also Dennis Hayes, the creator of Earth Day. Uh, also, different voices. Conservation is not going to succeed if we just keep talking to each other. Uh, and so we have a uh, riveting speaker, author of uh, Black Faces, White uh, Spaces, a rap artist who, uh, from London who raps about sustainability, a leader in uh, religious, uh, using religious communities for conservation, and the architect of the Vietnam Memorial, uh, Maya Lin, who's doing a lot of important work. Um, and then finally, it's the economy, stupid. Uh, so we have lots of solutions from businesses, both large and small. Um, uh, Marilyn Waite works uh, on venture capital to support uh, small companies that are doing social good. And I'd really like to point out uh, Brandon Dennison, which I, who I learned about in this project. He was, works in West Virginia. He's West Virginian born and bred. He's creating green jobs for people displaced by the loss of coal jobs. And, Chris, um, and uh, Gretchen Daly, who's a member of the US National Academy, and who has really pioneered the use of putting an economic value on nature as a mechanism to protect it. So I'd like to close with four things I've learned from this. Uh, I guess the first thing I learned was doing big things is hard. This is the hardest thing I've ever tried to do. Uh, and, but I think these things that I've learned actually sort of 
are, are more general than just the Earth Optimism Summit. Um, the first is awe inspiration. That's something we do rather naturally at the museum. It's kind of our bread and butter. But it's not just objects, it's also the stories of people. The second is service, the importance of service and solutions. A lot of the success stories that we're talking about are important not just to fish or elephants, but also the people that live nearby them. So outcomes that matter to society are important. Partnerships and connections. This is, I think, the hardest, most frustrating part of doing this. Uh, just last night, we all received a note from about Earth Day activities happening at the Smithsonian, and they never mentioned the Earth Optimism Summit, even though it's a top priority of the Secretary. So communication within the Smithsonian, between the Smithsonian and our partner entities, and also all sorts of groups that we don't necessarily normally interact with, for example, religious groups, artistic groups. And then finally, the importance of telling the story. This is uh, something that I think the education and outreach uh, group here in the museum does very well, but it's really important. But scientists sometimes forget that everyone understands narrative. That's why Hollywood works. That's why Madison Avenue works. There are a lot of people that don't understand graphs. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the logo is, is a, I, it was not designed by me. I actually have designed a logo, but that logo was designed by one of the, the event firm that's working with us. To, it's sort of the idea of inclusivity, uh, which I think is a very important message for, for sustainability and conservation. Thank you.